Yaron Brook, an intellectual author, speaker, and for reasons that defy me, seems to be growing in popularity. Yeah. Um, you know who you should have on to talk about this, and I think people have looped you in before, is Yaron Brook from, uh, from Ayn Rand Institute. He's but Yaron Brook is an idiot, and I'm going to show you why. He has a video that actually argues atheism did not lead to communism. So let's see what Yaron Brook has to say on the topic. Atheism did not lead to communism. The communists were the furthest thing from atheists. Okay, I gotta stop it there. The communists were the furthest thing from atheists? The Soviet Union was the first state to have as an ideological objective the elimination of religion. Toward that end, the communist regime confiscated church property, ridiculed religion, harassed believers, and propagated atheism in the schools. Over the course of nearly half a century, the Communist Party of the Soviet Union has endeavored to undermine the religious ties and inclinations of its citizens. Repressive actions against church officials, the introduction of laws limiting church power and religious proselytes and the dissemination of atheist propaganda have all been aimed at diminishing the scope and relevance of religion in the USSR, also noting that anti-religious propaganda was abundant to create an atheist society. Atheists waged a 70-year war on religious belief in the Soviet Union. The Communist Party destroyed churches, mosques, and temples. It executed religious leaders, flooded the schools and media with anti-religious propaganda, and introduced a belief system called scientific atheism. The systematic state-sponsored attempt to eliminate religion, militant atheism is not merely incidental or marginal to communist policy. It is not a side effect, but the central pivot. Lenin compared religion to a venereal disease. All references to religion from school curriculums were removed, Christian intellectuals were rounded up and sent to camps, the Soviet government generously financed atheists while brutally suppressing religious advocates. For this reason, scientific atheism should be considered the equivalent of a religious monopoly. Anti-religious propaganda infiltrated the most basic lessons and unrelated topics. The Soviet educational system held the bringing up of children in the atheist spirit as one of its primary visions. But propaganda was mentioned several times. So before we continue the video, I just want to take a quick look at some of the propaganda and see if it gives us any insights into the communist agenda. This one from 1931, a drawing of an emaciated worker looking at a cannon on top of which is an open Bible with a character of Jesus looking over it and the Pope pointing at the Bible. This one from The Godless, which was an atheist publication funded by Communist Party members, shows workers throwing Christ out of a wheelbarrow. This one has two images. On the left, smokestacks of a factory are plugged up by Christ and clergy. On the right is a working factory with a worker reading uh, The Godless, or The Atheist, the publication I m mentioned earlier. Here's another one which reads, The struggle against religion is the struggle for socialism. This one here, calling for women to break religious bonds and build socialism as she rips off the cross from her neck and heads towards the factories. Here's another one where a person seems to be entering some sort of bird catcher with religious figures trying to catch him. Here's another one which reads, Use the correspondence pen in the light of science to expose sectarian tricks. Here's another with religious figures on puppet strings, urging Soviets to get rid of the religious drug. Here's another one with an anti-religious character showing priests preaching to a congregation of sheep and goats. Here's another one from 1931, a drawing of a Red Army soldier walking and carrying two books under his arm, one marked Lenin and the other marked technology, and he is spearing this tiny person here labeled God. Here's one from 1931, an airplane with the word atheist painted on it, with a Red Army pilot and soldier dropping atheist publications over the city below. Remember, Euron Brooks says communists were the furthest thing from atheists. Uh, here's a character showing a fat guy manipulating religious symbols in front of a peasant. Uh, this one from the 1920s, it bolshevized women liberated from domestic slavery and the prejudices of religion. Here's one of a church with two priests on the roof waving incense burners, and peasants are entering the church with large bags and livestock and exiting with nothing. Uh, here's another one with a boy bearing a banner extolling world atheism stocks all over the globe. Here's another from 1930, a character of a capitalist holding a Bible as he sits on top of prisoners. Here's another from the early 30s, an old woman pulling a young girl by her braid and pointing to a church with an old priest looking out the window here and ringing the bell because religion is so creepy and awful. Here's another from 1930, a hammer coming down hard on an old Russian calendar uh, with religious symbols and pages flying out of it. And then below is a satirical poem criticizing the old calendar and urging the use of a new one because the old one is based on Jesus. Here's another from 1930 from the Godless, uh, a machine dumping religious figures into a pit. Here's another of a peasant burdened by carrying an icon of a smiling Jesus by a rope with a Russian Orthodox cross hanging from it and an excerpt from Lenin, Ridicule and Religion. Uh, 
Uh, here's a character depicting the figure of Christ leading a crowd of faithful into the open jaws of capitalism. Here's a, another one of a, showing a capitalist riding on a cross, being pulled by working men. Uh, another here on the left, there's, it's, I believe it says, by and by the bishops ate, and on the right, it says the power of the engines, which overcomes the power of the church. Here's another one with two images. On the left, a small priest is ringing the church tower bell with holy icons on display with a sale at decreased prices for the items. And on the right is a young man and girl with a book in hand, uh, dancing couples outside a collective farm club. And at the bottom, I believe it says, in vain the priest waits at the church shop. We live perfectly without icons and God. Uh, this one has selected passages from the church teachings about the inferiority of women. Know you're foolish to search for the heavens. Remember, how did you live in the past? The working woman is a comrade. Throw away your belief in priests and God. Here's another one with the anti-religious character depicting peasants weighed down with icons, candles, and chains. This one from the 1930s that reads, For the industrial plan, for completing a five-year plan in only four against religion. Here's another one depicting God being responsible for all the plagues of the world. Here's another one uh, about destroying the backwards religious traditions of the countryside and spreading scientific learning. And there's a bunch of these stuff. There's a bunch more. I don't know what all of them say, uh, but you get the point. Communists really hated religion, but I wanted to show this first because I thought it was interesting, and Euron is going to make a comparison between religion and communism to try to make them seem the same. So just keep this in mind, but let's let Euron continue. The communists were the furthest thing from atheists. Atheists in the sense of respecting reality, respecting reason, rejecting faith, rejecting mysticism. The communists were mystics through and through. They were mystics of the collective. They had nothing to do with reason. They were all about emotion and faith. Uh, Communism is not an atheistic, in a sense, again, of secular, which is, in a sense, reality-oriented. No, they wanted to reject reality for some vision that some collective called the proletarian held in their minds. There's a lot more in common between Christianity and communism than there is between communism and atheism. Atheism, again, is understood as reality orientation is fact-based, is reason-based. Okay, so he says a couple things here. He finishes with saying atheism is understood as fact-based and reason-based. Uh, atheism is not any of those things, despite him saying so, but this is something he does a lot, and you'll see this recurring throughout his arguments, is him positioning atheists as the beholders of all reason and religious people being without reason. So when he says communists had nothing to do with reason, that pretty much disqualifies them from being atheists because all atheists love reason so much as opposed to those religious folks who were basically reasonless. Uh, this sentiment, however, was also shared very much by the communists because they were also atheists like Euron Brook. Scientific atheists believe that their technological and scientific success would obviously disprove the validity of religion because the two are fundamentally the opposite. Official Soviet ideology stated that religion exists where knowledge is lacking and religion is opposed to science. In 1932, the Leningrad Academy of Sciences started setting up museums, the first being the Museum of History of Religion and Atheism. Uh, in the first 20 years, they set up hundreds of these museums of atheism. The displays were based on the idea that all religions were similar superstitions, which they demonstrated by juxtaposing idols, fetishes, Christian images, and objects of witchcraft. Uh, the museums characterized religion, ridiculing, and satirizing the Bible. All all Soviet museums shared a single clear ideology and mission, the establishment of socialism. One important part of that mission was the drive to destroy religion. Atheist propaganda and the struggle against religion began immediately after the Bolsheviks seized power in 1917. Leninists argued that the party should actively help to eradicate religion as a vital step in creating the new Soviet man. And he talks about the, you know, the communists being mystics like religious people, but they made the same arguments. They said the same things as Iran says. Uh, similarly, scientific atheists thought that atheism was empirically proven because God remained unseen or or because certain religious stories were scientifically inconceivable. The president of the League of Militant Atheists explained the past attempts to free humanity of religion failed because they were insufficiently scientific. He promised that the Soviet state could remedy past failures through the promotion of a clearly defined scientific atheism. He predicted that there could be no doubt that the fact that the new state of the USSR led by the Communist Party with a program permeated by the spirit of militant atheism gives the reason why this state is successfully surmounting the great difficulties that stand in its way. So the Soviets weren't mystics, they were materialists like Euron Brook. They hated the mysticism of religion, but let's keep going and see what else Iran has to say. So, in my view, if you just look at just look at morality, Christian morality is or, or religious morality broadly, why, why pick on the Christians? Religious morality generally is based on sacrifice, sacrifice of the individual to God, but it's still sacrifice of the individual to some entity that this individual has no knowledge of. 
no explicit knowledge of. He can't see it, he can't touch it, he can't feel it, right? But he's expected to sacrifice, to do his commandments, to follow the, God's wishes. Now take a communist, you're supposed to sacrifice for what? For a proletarian. Anybody seen a proletarian? Anybody felt a proletarian? There's no such thing as the proletarian. It's just a random characterization of a group of people that don't really actually exist. It's a group. Is there an entity? Is there consciousness that the proletarian has? Who benefits from your sacrifice? Is it any particular proletarian? Ooh, that's no good. That would be selfish. It has to be the proletarian, the group, the, 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 the fuzzy collective. It doesn't exist. It doesn't, there's no such thing as a collective called the proletarian any more than there's such a thing as God. Okay, he basically says, since God is immaterial and cannot be seen or felt by our senses, that makes it obvious that religion isn't real. This is a terrible comparison. His basic argument is that both religion and communism believe in something immaterial, and they're both not real. That makes them the same. This comparison is so awful because in order for it to function at all, you first have to accept his false or at the very least unproven premise. Step one of the argument is the proletariat is immaterial and God is immaterial. Step two of the argument is that the proletariat is false and God is false. No, this is a false premise because this comparison only works if you're already an atheist who subscribes to a materialistic worldview. You also have to completely ignore anything and everything the communists ever did or said about religion. For example, if you were trying to make an argument like Trump and Obama are alike, you could start with Obama was president and Trump was president. And Obama issued executive orders, and so has Trump. Okay, those things are objectively true. It doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat to be able to stay with that comparison, at least through these first two steps. But in your Roman's case, his analogy can't even get that far because he requires you to subscribe to his materialistic worldview because if you don't, his analogy completely falls apart. Not so coincidentally, so were the communists who, like Brooke, prescribed materialism because they were atheists. Stalin even wrote at length about this official Soviet position called dialectical and historical materialism. Dialectical and historical materialism is the world outlook of the Marxist Leninist party but uh, let's continue but you expect that a sacrifice you expect to follow the proletarians commandments what happens to you if you don't follow the commandments whatever the proletarian wants to do with you kill you uh, torture you put you in prison what happens if you don't do what God tells you well whatever God wants to do with you kill you torture you whatever God decides God and the proletarian are the same and they have their own priests right um, God has the Pope, who is representative on earth, and he gets to decide what happens to you. Uh, the proletarian has Lenin, and Lenin gets to interpret the will of the collective and apply it to you. There's nothing atheistic about communism. This is a thoroughly religious uh, uh, idea. It's just a religion that has replaced God with a collective. Okay, so he argues that in communism, the collective supplanted God and the role of religion, so that makes it just like religion. No, they replaced religion not with the collective, but with atheism. But since atheism is nothing, atheism doesn't fill the void that's now left empty that religion once filled. Only then does the collective come in to fill that void. With religion, people had a cup that was full, and then they were given atheism, which is an empty cup because it's nothing, and with an empty cup, people look to fill that cup, and then big government becomes the drink of choice. If you don't believe me, here's a map showing nations that formerly and currently practice state atheism. Most countries that practice and have practiced state atheism were communist countries. The communists knew this and actually saw it play out in reality. They actively shaped scientific atheism, not the collective, but atheism, to take the place of religion. Soviets found that religious rituals and holidays were the most difficult outward expression of religion to suppress. Religious holidays presented an initial dilemma because most people greatly enjoyed congregating for seasonal celebrations around religious themes. In response, the Soviets decided to create work schedules that always conflicted with religious holidays. But as work absenteeism continued on religious days, the Soviets determined that they needed to provide an alternative atheistic holidays to fulfill the need for celebrations. They created six state holidays which overlapped with major religious festivals and a multitude of rites to mark important events like weddings and funerals. Of course, the regime's adoption of numerous rituals in the personal and political realm ran counter to the general anti-ritualistic orientation of most 19th century European intellectual trends like Marxism, but as the anti-religious campaigns grew, so did their belief that religion could only be destroyed through a clever replacement. The overpageantry and solemnity surrounding communist rituals illustrate the extent to which communists embraced the pseudo-religious role of scientific atheism.
Scientific atheism, the official term for the Communist Party's philosophical worldview, posited the ultimate purpose of human existence, a moral code of conduct, and created a collection of atheistic rituals and ceremonies that mimicked religious ones. Soviet officials heavily promoted scientific atheism. Notice how it doesn't say that collective rituals and ceremonies mimicked religious ones, it says atheistic rituals and ceremonies mimicked religious ones. First, the doctrine of scientific atheism was itself problematic. It confusingly claimed to be a science while abandoning scientific methods altogether. Actual scientists avoided the topic of religion and produced no work which could verify the science of atheism. Second, scientific atheism replicated religious ceremonies, rituals, and produced a new communist sense of the sacred as an alternative to religion. This simply confused the population, many of whom mistook scientific atheism for a new religion and not an exit from religious belief altogether. So that even those few who wanted to believe in the ideals of atheistic communism simply ended up praying to to the gods of Lenin and Stalin. Under communist rule, religious regulations shifted dramatically from czarist policies which favored the Russian Orthodox Church to policies which repressed all religious activity. As a substitute, the Soviet regime established an official atheistic replacement for religion. In this way, scientific atheism became the new religious monopoly of Russia. So, Yorona argues that collectivism is just a religion that replaced religion, so it's not atheist, see? No, scientific atheism replaced religion. They pushed atheism because it was a gateway drug to collectivism, because atheism is incapable of fulfilling that desire for a greater purpose, and so the collective eventually becomes the replacement, but only after atheism. That's why they pushed it and shaped scientific atheism to replace religion, not a collective religion. But let's continue. It's just a religion that has replaced God with a collective, but it's the same faith-based, uh, it's the same authority-based. It's the same idea of having a representative on earth that you owe everything to. It's the same altruism and sacrifice, one to God, one to, to, to the collective. Again, he's referring to the Pope and Lenin using them as similarities because both religion and the proletariat have a representative on earth who you owe everything to, like he says. But if we're going to talk Pope, let's see what the Pope actually has to say. What did the Pope at the time, Pope Pius XI, have to say about socialism and communism? The Pope writes, If socialism, like all errors, contains some truth, it is based nevertheless on a theory of human society peculiar to itself and irreconcilable with true Christianity. Religious socialism, Christian socialism, are contradictory terms. No one can be at the same time a good Catholic and a true socialist. Let all remember that liberalism is the father of this socialism that is pervading morality and culture and that Bolshevism will be its heir. Communism teaches and seeks two objectives, unrelenting class warfare and absolute extermination of private ownership. Not secretly or by hidden methods does it do this, but publicly, openly, and by employing every and all means, even the most violent. Whether considered as a doctrine or an historical fact or a movement, socialism, if it remains truly socialism, cannot be reconciled with the teachings of the Catholic Church because its concept of society itself is utterly foreign to Christian truth. Yeah, again, everything Euron says is wrong. Christians were very much opposed to socialism and communism. They contradict each other. But let's keep going and see what else he has to say. It's the same uh, anti-individualism. You're not individual in religion. You're part of, you know, God's servants. Here you're not an individual. You're part of the proletarian. You're part of the bourgeoisie. You're part of something. There's no individuals in communism. Okay, so he basically says that there's no individuals in Christianity, just like communism. This is actually kind of funny because someone who says this doesn't know anything about religion or Christianity. It's kind of like how people who seem to be the most outraged about gun control seem to know little or nothing about guns. It's the same with atheists. Christianity is not a collective enterprise. The group cannot save you. You cannot be saved by proxy. Only you can save yourself. And the Bible talks repeatedly about the individual's relationship with God and how God loves and knows and cares about all of us individually, not as a collective whole. It's the complete opposite of communism. Atheists not knowing anything about religion isn't new. Atheist proselytizers had little or no knowledge of actual religious doctrine. In fact, a visitor to the Soviet Union in the 60s reported that no atheist ringleader has ever dared to allow those under him to study the Bible, even for the purpose of spying out the enemy's territory in order to more easily conquer it. The lack of any intellectual interest in scientific atheism left the work of anti-religious propaganda to individuals who knew little about religion or science, and they displayed their ignorance through an inability to properly impart what scientific atheism meant and how to explain the world. The intellectuals who are pushing atheism get embarrassed with difficult questions, for instance being asked, why are our youth so rough? Why have we so many neglected children? These are wounding questions in a communist society where there should be no laziness or neglect. Sometimes members of the audience point out that recent discoveries in physics are incompatible with the official materialism, or that men are able to perceive only phenomena but not the essence of things. Faced with such questions, the propagandists are completely at sea. Alright, let's keep going. 
And fundamentally, there's no reason. Reason is an attribute of the individuals. So if there are no individuals, there's no reason. But it, but it requires your own judgment, your own evaluation of fact. You can have that with religion. God is the final authority, not you. And the priests to interpret God are the authority, not you. What if you disagree with God? Who's right? You can't. That's the whole point. You can't apply reason. You can't apply reason. And yes, they want to have their cake and eat it. So in religion, you have some reason. But no, at the end of the day, you don't. At the end of the day, what God says, however you evaluate where you get that knowledge of what God says is, that goes. No matter, you, you, you know, you think the earth is round? No, God says it's flat. And God has to change his mind for you to be right. And, you know, that's what happened when the Catholic Church at some point decided, no, you, the earth is round and God always thought that. Yeah, right. Um, the same with, with, with in communism. You have an opinion? You matter? Your views matter? Science matters? Oh, the proletarian has to think of this. The proletarian has to invent this. You can't invent it. There is no such thing as reason. Okay, so he says a couple things here. He says, with religion, there's no such thing as reason. And atheists do this a lot. They try to pit reason, logic, and science against religion as opposed to each other. Uh, and one of their favorite examples is the one Euron uses, which is the Galileo example. So the communists did this too. Uh, a particular theme of the anti-religion campaign was the idea that science had disproved and was rapidly replacing religion. It works by setting up science against religion. One of the main features of St. Isaac's Leningrad Museum was a great dome to demonstrate the rotation of the earth and a large painting shown Galileo before for the Roman Inquisition. Uh, the Atheist Museum showed a statue of Galileo in chains, scholars thrown into prison or executed, all because the priests see them as redoubtable enemies. So because the Galileo example is used a lot and the whole story isn't told, I want to play a quick clip. The myth is that here was Galileo, the great atheist scientist, making vast progress, and the ignorant church was opposing him. When the reality is Galileo was a believer when he started and when he finished, and the church weren't the first to criticize him. It was the Italian philosophers. Why? Because they bought into Aristotle's idea that the earth didn't move. Everything moved around the earth. And the church thought that the Bible said the same. So they jumped on the bandwagon. The irony is here was Galileo who believed the Bible and he was right and they were wrong. And it was the whole worldview of the scientific establishment and philosophical establishment with the church hanging onto their, the Catholic church hanging onto their coattails. But what it needs to be seen as, as to what it is, Galileo was actually introducing a more biblical worldview into it. And he was right in challenging the domination of Aristotle. Now the equivalent today is Aristotle has been replaced by materialists. It's not that they believe that the earth doesn't move anymore, but they believe there's nothing but earth in the universe, so to speak. There's nothing but material. And that is being challenged. The irony is then and now that Galileo, the believer in the Bible, was right. Yeah, it wasn't just the church against Galileo, it was also the rest of the scientific community. But uh, Euron also says that you can't have reason with religion, which is really stupid, because we only have science because of religion that if you go back to the, the scientific revolution, to Kepler and Newton and Boyle and Galileo, these, these uh, early founders of modern science were operating out of an explicitly theistic framework. Newton always gets tagged as being the author of the great mechanistic universe, but his understanding of gravity was profoundly anti-materialistic. Uh, this is the fundamental law for Newton was gravitation. He thought it was absolutely mysterious that that there would be action at a distance, that there would be a force transmitted through empty space from the, the, the Earth to the Moon, for example. And he, in the end, he thought that, that gravity was only explained as an expression of God's, quote, constant spirit action. So the, 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 the theistic view of reality that gave rise to modern science in the period we call the scientific revolution was incredibly fruitful. All of the founders of modern science were theists, not atheists. But according to Euron Brook, they are all reasonless because you can't have reason with religion. Only through theism could the field of modern science have ever been discovered because theists believed the world was organized and rational, constructed by a rational being, which inspired them to discover the principles by which the universe or the earth is governed. There are countless scientists, philosophers, mathematicians throughout all of the world's history. Nearly all of the major discoveries of science have been done by theists and not by atheists. So clearly, religious people have reason. But let's continue. 
Uh, communism is a religion. Fascism, if you, if you look at the fascist ideology, particularly Nazism, it's a religion. It's a religion that replaces race instead of God and the proletarian. It places it, and it's all about faith and following commandments. Faith following commandments ain't atheistic. Those are religions. They both have faith and commandments. Commandments are just rules. None of us live in anarchy. We also all have faith in things. Your own has faith the scientific laws will be the same tomorrow as they are today. He has faith that strictly material processes can create consciousness, despite that never having been seen or demonstrated anywhere on Earth, ever. But this is what Euron Brook does. His parameters for why religion and communism are alike are extremely broad. Because if he gets more specific, the entire comparison falls apart. It's like saying Ronald Reagan and FDR were the same because they were both presidents and signed bills into law. Don't bother examining them any closer than that. But this nonsense and this inability to actually make an argument was common among atheists in the Soviet Union as well. In attempting to provide an alternative to religion, scientific atheists were unable to construct any clear or resounding message. On the one hand, they hoped to demonstrate that science was opposed to religion, but their scientific proofs, like showing that God did not live in the sky, misjudged the meaning and intent of religious explanations. On the other hand, they demanded an unquestioning faith in atheism without any real evidence for atheism. The line between faith and science became blurred within the doctrine of scientific atheism, which demanded a holy reverence for non-scientific ideas masquerading as science. Okay, let's let's finish up here. So just because somebody says, I don't believe in God, doesn't make them an atheist. An atheist is somebody who believes in his own capacity and in reality, in his reason and in reality. That's an atheist. But if you just replace God with something else, that doesn't make you an atheist. Listen to how he defines atheism. Atheists believe in their his own capacity and is reality oriented and in reason and reality. What do you, what do you talk what is he talking about? I believe in reason and reality. I also use my reason to determine there is evidence that there is more here than merely our physical world. I've never heard anyone claim not to believe in reality or thinks the concept of reason is some sort of hoax. But again, what he says is literally the opposite of the truth. If you believe there is no god, you're an atheist. But he adds in reason in reality because it sounds a lot better than saying uh, if you believe nothing then you're an atheist. But this inability to explain themselves was also common among atheists even then. While atheists proclaim that religion was based on ignorance, they repeatedly demonstrated their own incapacity to address the most basic questions from their would-be converts. Because atheism was supposed to be scientific, atheist promoters were wed to the use of science to prove atheism. This led to difficulties as actual scientists avoided the topic of religion. In the end, atheistic science became an ideology that avoided the scientific method altogether. While scientific atheists may have initially discussed evidence for atheism, they soon fell into an ideological stance which did not allow for any actual discourse. Everything Aaron Brooks says in this video is wrong. The guy's an idiot. Just know this if you see him speaking in the future and listen to his nonsense at your own risk.